Madam Administrator, it appears in the proposal's accompanying regulatory impact analysis that climate benefits are calculated using uh, your interagency working group social cost of carbon estimates. Previously, I've asked why the SCC estimates do not include a domestic cost-benefit calculation as required versus just a global cost-benefit calculation. So I'll ask in this context, why did EPA again not include that domestic cost-benefit calculation in regard to CO2? And is it because, as under the Brookings Institution analysis, if that analysis is correct, the benefits are largely enjoyed by other countries while all of the cost is borne by the United States? Well, let, let me just um, uh, uh, make a couple of comments, and I am happy to answer your question. The, the uh, costs and benefits associated with this rule are not just benefits in terms of reduced carbon, but also in terms of health benefits, and, they f and, and each of them far exceed the costs associated with the rule. When you, when you, uh, this Ma rule Madam also- Mr. I don't want to cut you off, but I have very limited time. Did you all do a domestic cost-benefit analysis as required? We did exactly the requirements in the, for OMB in the law that we needed to do for the Did you do a RIA. domestic cost-benefit That analysis. was not, it was considered to be uh, not so the most appropriate think, way to look at it. It's looked at global. It's, you it don't think that globally. is required by the law? We actually followed all of the procedures we needed to do for the Office of Management. Okay, well, I disagree budget. with you about that. Okay. Uh, I think it's required. I also think it's useful to know a domestic, a U.S., I mean, we are representing U.S. citizens, a U.S. cost-benefit analysis. Let me ask you some Louisiana-specific things which I am concerned about. In reviewing EPA's calculations regarding Louisiana performance goals, uh, we in our State DEQ discovered that it appears EPA included at a capacity factor of 70 percent at least two, maybe more, natural gas combined cycle units that are not operational or not fully operational. It is a significant mistake that makes our burden significantly uh, larger. Is that going to be corrected? Are those mistakes elsewhere in State plans? Uh, uh, Senator, the reason for the comment period is to take a look at all of the, the State data as well as the framing that we have put out there. So we are open to comment. But we have not in this rule required any, any state to operate their NGCC at a 70 percent capacity. And, and if, in fact, we have overestimated the amount of fossil fuel pollution generated in Louisiana, it would be a benefit to know that for both the state and us. Okay. Well, we are certainly going to get that to you, but I, I just want to note that factored into the EPA's Louisiana plan are, are just facts that aren't there. Uh, well, actually, capacity that, that, that would be a benefit to that the state. That isn't operating. <laughs> Um, I am also concerned because Louisiana has some major, significant job producing industrial projects coming online in the next five to ten years in particular. Uh, so that is going to dramatically increase electricity demand. Did EPA factor into state emission targets that sort of economic growth and necessary load growth? Or did it only factor into state emission targets? Uh, demand destruction and, and reduced growth. Actually, it, it, uh, the reason why we did we took this comprehensive approach instead of a within the fence line look at each facility was recognizing that the economy needs to grow and in, in making sure that states had the flexibility to design their plans for exactly this reason. What, so states Louis will be able to continue to grow and to design a Louisiana's plan that accommodates case, that. What demand growth did you build in? Because again, we don't have average demand growth or we don't have growth yep. that we are experiencing now as a nation, which was very low. We have major industrial projects coming online. Yes. So is that specifically factored in? Well, it, it, it is certainly considered economic growth is part of, of what is considered when we look at energy prices and we look at the challenges associated with keeping demand down Did while the, the economy grows. Were those specific major industrial projects factored in? 
I don't believe that there that they I, I I really can't answer the question in terms of the way you're posing it, Senator, because clearly the economy is going to continue to grow. What we uh, looked at was what efforts can we accommodate for states to take credit for to keep that energy demand down. And we believe that the steps we're asking them to take are practical and reasonable. Okay. What I'm hearing is you factored in overall national economic growth. That's not what I'm talking about. I'm talking about huge Louisiana specific yep. industrial projects that require major load growth. And it, what I'm hearing is that wasn't factored into the Louisiana plan, and that's a big problem. Well, we're, we're happy to take a look at it. And as you, I'm sure you're aware, this is a, about national impacts in the, in the RIA that would, were designed and developed. We're going to continue to analyze that. But the most important thing right now in the comment period is, is for us to look at this data, make sure that we have it. And I think, as you know, EPA works very hard in between comment and final to make sure we get this right.